stables. Oh. You've got to remember <laughs> at Bendigo there was no grass. One of the big things that they used to advertise was good stabling. The implication was we have hay for your horses. Because when you look around here, the feed is rubbish as far as horses go. In fact, if horses are on this sort of diet for too long, they become sick. So they, they used to spend quite a lot of their um, hotel profits making sure that there was a decent hay store so that the horses could be uh, um, catered for. So this here is where the, the provincial hotel was first built. Now, it went through a whole chain of owners. Let's go for a wander to the Aurora and um, we'll see. So everything you'll see from now on was built by hand in 1874. If you got one from them, it was considered a very, very high quality New Zealand one, then you could be paying anything up to £2,000. Plus, the erection of a stamper battery was no mean feat. It had to be built on a solid foundation. It had to be erected perfectly vertical. Because if you didn't, the thing would, it would literally throw itself to pieces. Because the, the sheer forces <coughs> being applied, if it wasn't well built, and there are examples of that, you've spent all that money and successfully smashed up your equipment. and was diverted around that peak and was taken by the blue men to a water wheel and you'll see when we look down you'll actually see the cascade of, um, of tailings that was there. The standard battery here operated from 1870 continuously to 1878. <laughs> They used to choose nights of full moons to have dances yes. in those days. So yes. do you know if there was one that night? Almost certainly. Okay. Because it's just too dangerous to go down it? or up. <coughs> Summer? I'm Sorry? Getting home. <laughs> uh, yeah, in January, late January. All yeah. oh, right. Yeah. Evan's got a program to figure out the full moon way back then. We'll check oh, it yeah. out. Well, Jeff Blaney wrote a, a good book called Black Kettle Full Moon or yeah. something like that. And it explains the importance of the, of the full moon. That, People used to arrange social functions to fit around the full moon be simple for safety. Dances. During the week it was used for school, during the week evenings it was used for the Templars Lodge meetings. And it was just down on the flat, just past the green department conservation sign there. It was carted away to be used for the first terrace school. Much to the horror of the Bendigo residents who remained up here because of course they had paid for it. So the Department of, of Education appropriated Bendigo property for their new school. And um, there's records of Bendigo residents standing along the side of the road throwing rocks at the drayman who had the church on the back of his dray going down the hill. So he said, climbing the ladder at the end of the day uses all the puff you have. And um, you can imagine climbing a 38-storey building would use all the puff I have and more. It also is intriguing that it, it very clearly this building was built by someone different to, to build the other half. If you look at the stonework, they're quite, they're quite different in terms of their construction, but that is a reasonably typical blacksmith's half, half in the corner there.
critical thing with those, of course, is they have to be keep their temper and they have to keep their edge. That then means you need a, a skilled blacksmith or you actually start to become quite inefficient. Anywhere around here except on that stone platform because that is where the Todd family live. So they, the, the rich are the same as us except when it comes to living conditions. You, so Charles Todd, he would fire people if they were found up on that platform. They decided to cut the men's wages by sixpence a day. There was no union here, but they collectivised and actually said, we are going on strike. The strike lasted nine weeks. It's New Zealand's first site-wide mine strike. It's New Zealand's first gold miner strike. It's New Zealand's first site-wide strike of any form where every worker went out, despite not being in a union. Todd came up with a genius idea. There are two 16 and a half acre leases, plus the Golden Link lease, that define Bendi uh, Cromwell Company land. And there were several houses built on that, so including some of the strike leaders. So a letter was sent to each striking person who had a house on Cromwell Company lease, which was basically straight out from here, did not include Welshtown. And the letter said, you have five days to remove your house from our land or the, le or the rent will become uh, an, uh, an increasing scale up to 20 shillings a week, or in other words, half their pay.